The new M4 iPad Pro seems like a dream device. It's thinner than the iPhone that started Bengate and has a completely new display technology. It's perfect. And that's what you would say before living with it for a month. I did that and unlike everything else, this is the only device where the hardware and overall feeling of it made me want to use it more. But in the end, I just couldn't due to the various problems I found. But I was a big fan of the iPad when I was in college. So I also wanna talk about whether the latest iPad Pro is still worth it from a student's perspective. Let's start with the display. It's a completely new type of display that in the end just feels kind of normal. It's like if you just stuck four iPhones together. The tech behind it is pretty cool though. There are basically two layers of OLED stacked on top of each other to achieve 1600 nits of peak brightness. And it can sustain 1000 nits of full screen brightness on an OLED screen that's this large. So it's super bright, but so was the last gen mini LED iPad, which could already achieve this brightness level. Of course, there's blooming with the mini LED display, but you're not going to notice that doing some regular work and watching YouTube videos. However, if you're looking at the smaller iPad Pros, this is actually a pretty big improvement over the previous generation's LCD display, both in terms of contrast and brightness. But being this new tandem style OLED doesn't actually make it look any better than just regular OLED on the iPhone. So this is the greatest display that Apple makes, but it wasn't like, wow, I've been missing this my whole life. However, the new nano texture option is actually pretty special. To show this, I got a matte screen protector, a big boy computer, and some potato chips. Windows computers have had matte displays for ages now, but they're mostly plastic. The nano texture glass on the iPad doesn't feel plasticky at all. In fact, it feels even smoother than regular glass. When you're writing on it, the side of your hand just glides much smoother on it, and the pen feel is also more consistent, so you won't need the drying gloves. It also doesn't feel like paper-like or any other plastic matte screen protector which typically gives you a more paper-like feedback when you're writing. The nano texture glass feels much smoother than that and more like regular glass that just somehow doesn't stick to your hands. I think this is the best writing experience. Another big problem with typical matte screens is the micro color specs that you see, which is especially noticeable when displaying just white. And the nano texture glass is dramatically better at handling this than a plastic screen protector but it's not perfect, so you can still see a little bit of that when you're looking really closely. It's not enough to be perceived as a loss of resolution though. Beyond that, there are really two aspects to a good display when it comes to the anti-reflection coating. Scattering the light so that you don't see a mirror image of yourself is only one aspect of it. The other aspect is how much light is being reflected in total. And when compared to a pretty good matte screen on a Windows laptop, the iPad reflected noticeably less light. So in a brighter room, you would lose less contrast. But this aspect can actually be even better. Just look at the S24 Ultra. It just absorbs all of the light and barely throws any back. So an ideal screen would be this, but with nano texture. Lastly, one interesting fact. Only the iPad with nano texture comes with a cleaning cloth, which is somewhat of an ominous sign. So I got the potato chips and smudged it up. Surprisingly, the nano texture behaves about the same as a regular glass. It's not really much worse, and more importantly, it's just as easy to clean, unlike the plastic screen protectors, which always just feels kind of oily. Display aside, the new iPad Pro also has the new M4 processor. It's around 20% faster for single and multi-core than the M3, which is huge. And the GPU is really powerful too. But that honestly just makes me more excited for the next generation of MacBooks because there are very few situations where you can even use and feel this level of performance on an iPad. Apple promised that there would be a bunch of pro apps that would, in theory, make use of the power of M4. And maybe some are okay, but the app that I use for video editing is DaVinci Resolve. It got an iPad app, but to this day, the app is still missing like 90% of the features of the desktop version and is overall just really buggy and hard to use. I have seen professional artists do great work on the iPad Pro and maybe the final cut experience is much better. But to me, the iPad Pro being a pro device is still just a promise that rings hollow. And if the iPad is something you're gonna spend lots of time working on, you might want the new Magic Keyboard too. It's actually super nice. It still feels too expensive for what it is, but you get a nice aluminum keyboard deck and the trackpad is haptic just like on the MacBooks, so you can click anywhere. And I also like the screen being hinged in the middle. Setting this down next to a MacBook in the same typing position, the screen kind of just floats in front of you, which makes it feel bigger than it is and also easier to touch with your finger. It's honestly pretty incredible that you can have more power than a MacBook in such a small package. But you're very much paying for it. 
If you include the keyboard, it's almost $500 more expensive than the base M3 MacBook Air, costing even more than a base M3 MacBook Pro. And unlike the MacBooks, which already is very expensive to upgrade, trying to spec out an iPad is a total nightmare. If you want the nano texture, you have to step up to the one terabyte model, which not only forces you to pay for more storage, but also more CPU core and more RAM. So in the end, getting the nano texture forces you to spend an extra $700 more. But that aside, if you're just looking at the hardware alone, you're not really getting ripped off, since on paper, the iPad Pro is kind of nicer than even the MacBook Pro in many ways. So as long as it's reasonable to use as a computer, then this can be the only thing that I bring to class or when I'm traveling around outside. Perhaps I'm more of a computer power user, but man, in my experience, the iPad isn't even close. In fact, I can't even see it as a computer replacement or temporary substitute in the next five years. And the latest WWDC did nothing to change it. You get a new calculator, which is actually pretty cool. Okay, but here's a perfect example of how iPad OS just doesn't work properly. This is just a random Google search, but as I adjust the width of the window, the text becomes so small that it's no longer readable. This is clearly just some phone operating system feature carried over here, which is quite annoying to deal with. And this is far from its only issue. Another example is if you're typing away on the keyboard and you have a YouTube video on the side, you go to adjust the video resolution, but the button right here cannot be clicked with a cursor. You have to use your finger. And this is not even getting into multitasking and stage manager. If you have stage manager on, you can't just full screen your video. You have to full screen the app first. But after you full screen your app, it's now no longer in the same stage as all your other apps. These are some specific use case issues that you might not have, but there are plenty more of these just small random issues, like the web browser only running at 60 hertz. So if you do anything other than the most basic of computer tasks, you're probably going to find several yourself. Maybe you're less bothered by these inefficiencies and inconveniences, but what even is the point of trying to replace a laptop with an iPad? Back when MacBooks were running Intel processors and were way less efficient than the iPads, it was a really interesting prospect to have a computer that can be this thin and light. But ever since the M1 MacBooks, the real computers are just as efficient. And the M3 MacBook Air is about the same thickness as the iPad Pro with the keyboard case. So why would you ever pay 50% more money for an iPad Pro just to suffer through all the small inconveniences of forcing a touch-first tablet operating system to work like a computer? I think the iPad Pro isn't really replacing computers for most people, especially not power users. And fundamentally, on a real computer OS, Third-party developers have so much more power and freedom when it comes to the software. You want a Windows manager with hotkeys? Just download a free and open source app like Rectangle. You want a clipboard manager so that you can quickly copy multiple things? There's a free app for that too. And those are the things that iPadOS developers will never be able to do. Mobile apps just cannot work that way. To me, it really just makes no sense to even attempt to switch from a computer to an iPad. Sure, if you're an artist who mainly draws or you just need some particular iPad apps, then yeah but I cannot see myself possibly getting through university with just an iPad Pro being my main device. If you're a student and really just need a tablet for 20% of the time to write down some notes or equations, a Windows 2-in-1 device can make a lot more sense as a one device solution. Plus, the iPad with its keyboard ergonomically also doesn't make a great laptop. It's really top heavy, so it really wants to tip forward when it's on your lap, and you also can't open it with one hand. But with that out of the way, is the iPad Pro a good tablet? I'm not an artist, but from a student's perspective, it's great. The new Apple Pencil Pro with its squeeze function makes switching pens much faster, and Find My would have been clutch for all the times I couldn't find the pencil. And you might need this feature even more than before because with the iPad being much thinner, it's actually kind of easy for the pencil to just fall off. Also note that the M4 iPad Pro can only work with the new Apple Pencil Pro. If you already have the second gen Apple Pencil, unfortunately, you're gonna have to get a new one. Another cornerstone of the tablet use case is watching content. The new screen is great and it's super thin and light, so it's easy to hold for long periods. But the big iPad has a pretty rare four x three aspect ratio. It's more square than most other laptops and tablets. So if you're watching content on it, it's kind of smaller than you would expect for a 13 inch device. As you can see, the 13-inch MacBook Air has a 23% bigger area while playing a 16x9 video. Another thing about the iPad is that it works really well as a companion device to a MacBook. If you just want a secondary display for your MacBook, the iPad can do that even wirelessly, but I do prefer to plug it in for the most stable connection. 
Also, universal control works great. You can be working on something on the MacBook and just be using the iPad to draw. You can then transfer your drawing very seamlessly to the MacBook. People often say that the iPad has pretty good battery life. And I guess it does if you're just doing some basic things on it occasionally. But after bringing it around and using it for as much things as I can, the battery life isn't nearly as good as the M3 MacBook Air. And that's even with the new M4 processor. After four hours of video watching, the M3 MacBook Air still has 66% left, while the iPad only has 49% left. That's quite a big difference, but not really that surprising considering the M3 MacBook Air comes with a 52 watt hour battery, while the 13 inch iPad Pro only has a 39 watt hour battery. But the biggest problem is that all of the nice things I said also applies to the M2 iPad Pro and even the M1. Unless you're doing something that can really benefit from the speed, it's really just about the nicer screen and the new Apple Pencil, which makes it hard to justify the upgrade or getting this over the M2 iPad Pro on a discount. And if you are the type who would really appreciate the new features on the Apple Pencil Pro, you can also just get the new iPad Air, which is also compatible with it. Really, the perfect iPad for me, and probably for most university students, would be this iPad, but with the M2 processor and a big discount. The new M4 seems to only have very limited use case for a small group of people. The general efficiency and therefore battery life gain seems very marginal, if at all. Also, given how frustrating multitasking and the keyboard cursor experience can be on the iPad, it's not replacing laptops. The M4 processor is so fast, and the display is so nice. I wish I could do more with the new iPad Pro. But ultimately, with the generally weaker software, there's just a lot of wasted potential. If you enjoyed, please subscribe.